Today we'll talk about Africa, once seen by Europe as the antithesis of civilization, the heart of darkness in the words of a certain Joseph Conrad. Centuries later, Africa remains ignored. It makes news for its conflicts, poverty and exoticism. For the longest time, the world saw it as a lost cause. Then one country saw opportunity and thus began a new race for Africa, not very different from the scramble of the 19th century when colonial Britain and France wanted raw materials, slaves and geopolitical influence. Now in the 21st century, global powers are in more or less the same race. China, the United States, India, the European Union, Japan, Israel, Canada, all of these countries are in the race for Africa. And one country is emerging as the clear winner. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay and this is Africa, a continent of 54 sovereign states, 17% of the world's population, 9.6% of the global oil output, 90% of the world's platinum supply, 90% of the world's cobalt supply, half of the world's gold supply, two-thirds of the world's manganese, 35% of the world's uranium, 75% of the world's coltan, and 54 votes in the United Nations General Assembly. This is what makes Africa so attractive and makes the continent a battleground for global powers. There are numerous fronts, investment and infrastructure, military power, diplomacy, soft power, trade, geopolitics. Every country has its own interest in Africa. In 2016, Israel began its scramble for the continent. Benjamin Netanyahu became the first Israeli prime minister to visit Africa in 50 years. What did he want? Votes. In favor of Israel and against Palestine in the United Nations resolutions. Africa and Israel share similar histories, he said. Israel went on to sponsor solar, water and agricultural technologies. In the same year, 2016, Senegal co-sponsored a UN resolution. It condemned the construction of illegal Jewish settlements in the West Bank. What did Israel do? It cancelled the Mashav drip irrigation project. And this is just one example. Here's another one. The European Union has pledged more than $54 billion in sustainable investment for Africa. What does the EU want? Access to the African market of 1.3 billion people. Brussels has negotiated free trade agreements with at least 40 African countries. But does this ensure a balanced two-way trade? It doesn't. And no country has a bigger interest in Africa than China. China is funding one in five infrastructure projects in Africa. It is building every third one. Africa has an infrastructure deficit and China has a signed checkbook. Starting 2005, China has invested at least $2 trillion in Africa. It built 6,200 kilometers of railways, including the continent's longest railway line connecting Ethiopia and Djibouti. Beijing has also built the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa. What does China get in return? A lot. Geopolitical influence to start with. Beijing is selling its culture, its currency. In Guinea-Bissau, exit signs are written in Mandarin. China has established at least 50 Confucius Institutes across 33 countries. Several African countries use Chinese currency. China also gets a strategic overseas base. In 2017, China built its first overseas base at the Horn of Africa, Djibouti to be specific. Djibouti connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Indian Ocean via the Suez Canal. The base has the capacity to accommodate 10,000 troops. China also gets a market to dump its goods. China is Africa's largest trading partner. Chinese trade has increased 40-fold in the last two decades. At least 10,000 Chinese firms operate in Africa. This is according to a McKinsey study. Africa has resources and China has access. Did you know that a third of China's investments in Africa are in the mining sector? And finally, it gets to debt trap Africa. But here's the thing, China is not the only country investing in this continent, it's not even the biggest. The United States is Africa's largest investor. It accounts for $54 billion of FDI stock. There are 600 American companies operating in South Africa alone. And this, even after the US president called Africa, this. For the longest time, Africa was nothing but a war zone for Washington. It has over 7,000 troops deployed in the continent. They are spread across some 13 African countries, including Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Chad, Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, South Sudan, Somalia, and Tunisia. 
For the US, Africa was a continent for counter-terrorism operations. What happened then? Why is the US suddenly interested in Africa? The answer is this. For the US, Africa is now a new front to take on China, and Washington is now fighting it out for power and influence. An article on the US State Department website reads, and I quote, Africa is the continent of the future. Thus, we need to make the most of its potential. By 2050, its population will more than double to 2.2 billion people with over 60% under the age of 25. Where is Africa's interest in all of this? Also, what about India? What role does India play in this continent? New Delhi's ties with Africa date back to the time of Mahatma Gandhi. India was part of the Bandung project of 1955. New Delhi supported Africa's anti-colonial struggles. It supported the liberalization movements in Ghana, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Angola, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau. India also raised the issue of racism in South Africa. It will be unfair to say, though, that India's newfound interest in Africa has nothing to do with China. In 2018, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi toured key African states just ahead of Chinese President Xi Jinping's visit. In 2018, India decided to open 18 new embassies in Africa. India has defence partnerships with Zambia, Nigeria, Ghana, Ethiopia, Botswana, Uganda, Mozambique and Namibia. New Delhi is currently training African military. Indian company Airtel is a dominant telecom firm in Africa. New Delhi is offering 50,000 scholarships to African students. Despite everything, India is far behind China in the race for Africa. China's Belt and Road Initiative has sealed its hold on Africa. If in the 1900s, Africa was colonized with force, in 2020, it is being trapped by loans. China accounts for 14% of sub-Saharan debt. In Kenya, the volume of Chinese loans is six times that of France, which is the country's second largest creditor. And Sri Lanka can tell you what happens when Chinese loans are not repaid. China is looking to capture Africa. It has a strong diaspora, it is spending big money, it is selling its movies, culture and currency. China extracts raw materials, it manufactures products with them and sells them back to this continent. Does this remind you of something? What did the British do in India? In the 19th century, the rivalry between Britain and France fueled Africa's colonization. In the 21st century, the trade war between the United States and China is hastening the same. Just like the 19th century, there are numerous countries in the scramble for Africa. And just like the 19th century, there is nothing in it for Africa. Gravitas Plus, co-presented by Skoda. Simply clever.